So this is an ounce of gold. It has been over three months since I last bought one. But now I am excited because the price of gold is starting to crash. Okay, you might be confused or probably you think I'm losing my mind. Sean has finally lost it. But there's a good reason why I'm making this video. And it's because the end game is still perpetual inflation. Yes, I am aware that the US dollar index is rising and almost all assets are getting annihilated. Their prices are dropping, but we need to look past this deflationary collapse. In our lead story today, gold moves below 1850 on market caution, eyeing Powell's upcoming speech. The price of gold has taken a beating, and there's a big fear that gold could drop below the $1,800 level. But if it does, I'm going to be buying even more. And looking at the price action, we can see this meteoric crash down. Yes, crash from 1930 down towards 1820. And if this is your first time in the gold markets, it's really easy to get freaked out. And I have to be honest, right? There's a chance that gold might go lower. We are now in an environment where interest rates are going up and will likely stay higher for longer. And this is going to warp the mindset of investors and really force them out of all assets. And one of those assets is gold. But you can't time the markets. Higher rates is a double-edged sword. Yes, it pulls money away from gold but it also puts tremendous pressure on the US economy and the banks. If or when something collapses, the Federal Reserve will likely step in and intervene. Maybe it's printing money or flooding the markets with liquidity or power could simply start reducing the benchmark interest rate, right? They will move to relieve pressure on the system. But either way, this will push money out of hiding into assets and one destination will be gold. And this next collapse will be one where inflation is still high because the supply side of the equation is controlled by oil prices. And who controls oil? It's Russia, it's Saudi Arabia, it's OPEC. It sure as hell isn't a Federal Reserve. Inflation is going to be a forever problem. And it's only a matter of time before everyone simply wakes up. Everyone is now hallucinating. And the fiat currency dream is going to end real soon. But let's talk about why gold is selling off, right? We have to understand this. Over the past few days, we saw a mass sell-off of all the major asset classes. Stocks sold off, the bond market collapsed, and the price of gold went down. And this block buff goes beyond just the fear of a US government shutdown. It's basically the market realizing that the Federal Reserve has lost the inflation fight. They are seeing inflation rebound and high interest rates are the only cure that Powell knows how to administer. If we look at the yields of US Treasuries, we are seeing it push up to crazy historic levels. The 10-year is now trading at over 4.6%. We are back to the 07 levels just before the great financial crisis a year ago. Yields on the short end are also extremely tempting. The 6-month is above 5.5%, which is a tremendous yield compared to 2 years ago when it couldn't even get 1% on US bonds. And as rates go higher, this makes the US dollar look better. Because now you can earn more by parking your money in treasury bonds, right? So a lot of retail money is being lured away from stocks and gold and flowing into short-term bonds. They are being parked in money market funds. And this is creating two problems that are putting pressure on the price of gold. The first effect is the US dollar rising. And as we speak, the dollar is strengthening against global currencies. It has gone from 100 points to nearly 107 in just three months. And that is a big move and the stronger dollar is traditionally bearish for gold. Gold is priced in dollars. So as the dollar goes up, gold costs less in terms of the greenback. It's simply how the system works. Secondly, we have an epic bond market sell-off for long-dated treasuries. Remember that the Federal Reserve has stopped hiking for now. So rising yields today are a direct consequence of bondholders dumping their treasury positions. And listen to this, once unthinkable bond yields, now the new normal for markets, BlackRock is sounding the alarm on inflation that is pushing US 10-year yields to 5%. The US bond sell-off by the big boys isn't done yet. And when they dump their holdings, they are booking a big loss. When interest rates go up by 1%, bonds could lose up to 9% of their value. So bond investors are underwater massively. They need to find liquidity. Where are they going to find it? Gold, the store of value. They will liquidate the precious metal for cash to save their positions, especially if they are trading on leverage. So short-term money is being lured towards money markets yielding over 5%.
while long-term money is now taking a huge loss. And this is why gold is under tremendous pressure today. But this won't last forever, guys. And the final destination is still an inflation hell. Now, the short-term price of gold could continue to drop further. It might drop below 1800 or even 1700 if we crash into a recession with deep liquidity issues, right? But let's not forget the fiscal situation of the world's biggest economy is worsening the US economy. The government shutdown debacle is a symptom of the underlying rot that's happening in the US economy. And it all has to do with endless deficit spending. Every time Congress spends money, whether it's to fund Ukraine or for that Green New Deal, it comes from deficit spending. It means our best friend Janet Yellen has to sell more US bonds to raise the money. It's not very complex. There's a reason why Yellen freaked out over the US government shutdown, saying it will undermine US economic progress. Because if spending was cut, there would be no way to issue new bonds. They can't borrow from the future to pay back the debt holders today. And debt will spike treasury yields and push America closer towards a fiscal cliff, the point where you can no longer borrow any more money. So deficit spending will continue. It's the only way to prevent the bond market from imploding in the short term. However, yields will stay high because Yellen will keep flooding the market with treasuries and that poses a big problem. According to the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget, US debt interest payments are simply unsustainable. And they clearly laid out why this fiasco can't continue forever. If your debt is growing faster than your economy, and if your interest payments are growing faster than your economy or income, those are all huge warning signs. And this is why I stack physical gold, because you can't print this, and there's a finite amount of precious metals in the world. The mountain of debt is simply becoming unsustainable. And this is why the Federal Reserve has to lower rates down the road. They don't have a choice. It might not be for the next 6 or 12 months, but it will have to happen, or the debt will literally implode. Sure, the US government they can hike taxes on the wealthy and the middle class, or they can even do the unthinkable. They can do cutbacks on social security, but there's zero political will to do that. So inflation is the easier path to take. Then we also have the banking crisis. Let's not forget that higher interest rates are literally going to choke out the banks further. And I want us to focus on this one chart. This is the Bank Term Funding Program, the BTFP, the infamous window where the Federal Reserve takes all the toxic bonds from the bank at par value and then gives them cash for liquidity. Well, the usage has been increasing since it was introduced in March this year. The banks are clutching tightly to over $100 billion in emergency liquidity like an old woman clutching onto a purse in a dark alley. And why are they panicking? Because depositors are leaving the bank. They were getting screwed for years and now that money markets are giving 5 to even 6%, they are pulling out their cash. In a shocking story from Bloomberg, bank deposits drop year over year for the first time ever. S&P says total deposits at US banks ended the year around $17.3 trillion, a 4.8% decrease from the prior period ending June 30th. So the Federal Reserve can't afford for interest rates to stay high forever. They will have to slam it down sooner or later or they'll be forced to drop it if the entire banking system collapses. And that is good for gold. Now, that was just the economic reasons why I buy gold. I know power will flinch and you have to print money on lower rates, right? But there's another factor that's putting a strong bid for gold and that is central bank buying. And we know central banks buy gold as part of their allocation, right? It's about diversifying their resources, their reserves away from national currencies because all fiat currencies lose buying power over time. Doesn't matter if it's the dollar, the euro or the Chinese yuan, you'll buy less stuff with it over the next 10 years. That's a guaranteed loss. That's a guarantee. 2022 has also taught central banks that geopolitical risk is a clear and present danger. China has been buying gold, announcing their purchases for the past 10 months. It's basically a monthly reminder and advertisement to the world to de-dollarize. And in an update, Russia is back to stacking physical gold as well. According to the IMF, Russia's central bank is back buying gold to its 2023 highs in August. And we can't ignore this shift because many BRICS nations could start to follow this trend and then the demand for gold could explode. 
Data from the World Gold Council shows central bank buying has been especially strong over the past year. With the exception of three months, central banks have been buying gold at very high prices. They were buying well above $1,900 because it's more than just a store of value. It's about reducing their counterparty risk. And as we move towards this brave new world, where China and Russia move to de-dollarize everyone, we will see more and more money start to flow towards physical gold. So the demand for gold on the macro side of things is strong as we move towards a multipolar future. No one wants to be beholden to a single currency, right? Now, that's not the primary reason why I personally buy physical gold. I buy gold because it's a store of value and it is outside the financial system. I don't want all my wealth to be locked into the banking sector, guys. Our positions in stocks and shares, but there's always a risk of putting your money to Wall Street. You just don't know the level of counterparty risk you have, right? Gold, on the other hand, is physical. This one ounce gold bar is elemental. I can get cash easily for this, no matter where I am in the world. So here's how I'm personally buying gold. And remember that you have to decide for yourself whether this is the time to buy or not. And this is simply what I'm doing. Now, of my investment money, I'm putting around 20% into gold. So for every $100 I pump into the market, $20 will be allocated towards gold. Now, this is the big percentage because the average allocation is supposed to be 5 to 10%. When you talk to people on Wall Street, they say to have just exposure to gold in case of financial Armageddon. And that's what the experts in their fancy suits say. But I'm doubling my exposure because I believe we are already living through the financial apocalypse. The end game is inflation. And with the world literally swimming in debt, that is why I buy gold. And now I can buy it on the cheap. I'm going to do so. But just a word of caution. I am not a fan of lump sum investing, especially in this clown economy where higher rates are starting to implode the system. We could see the price of gold slowly continue to drop over the next few weeks or months. You'll be pulling your hair out and you look like me, bald and angry. And remember, you can't time the markets or call the bottom. If you manage to catch that exact moment, hey, you're either secretly clairvoyant or you're just very lucky and I congratulate you. And of my remaining 80%, over half is going to flow into money market funds. If we look at the yield from the Vanguard money market fund, it is giving you 5.3% today. And that is 5.3% after expenses. That is risk-free yield that pays me to wait as the market continues to implode. So if an economic apocalypse comes and the market's crater, I'll have more dry powder that's increasing at 5% to buy up even more gold. And if you see me at the local dealer buying gold, I am simply buying an ounce or two at a time. I'm not doing an all-in move at the casino. But a word of caution, guys, if you're buying physical gold like this bar I have right here, you want to make sure you aren't buying some decorative bar and getting pure bullion. This is a Royal Canadian Mint 1 ounce bar and its premium is around 3-4%. to You'll want to reduce that physical premium because there's no guarantee you'll get it back when you sell. And always think of the worst case scenario that you'll only get back the spot price and make sure the piece of gold you buy is recognizable for sure, right? PEM is a good brand, RCM is a good brand, the Perf Mint is also a good brand but don't overpay for the physical premiums. Now let's talk a bit about gold miners. I hold positions in the indexes, the GDX for example, but if you want to buy them, you have to be aware of the difference between physical gold and the mining companies. The miners are businesses that harvest gold out of the ground. They are affected not just by the gold price, but by inflation and high interest rates as well. And looking at the GDX, which is a collection of gold mining companies, it has been under continuous pressure for well over the past year. In order for the miners to go back up, we will need a higher gold price as well as interest rates to drop. Higher rates impair the operations of the miners just like any other company. But when it does, the reaction will be bigger than just pure physical gold, right? If you can't stand volatility, just don't buy the miners. Understand the gold mining business first. It's best to stay out of the miners if you're really unsure. The volatility for gold, the precious metal itself, is around 2.26%, while GDX, the miners, is nearly 6.6%, triple the madness, and that equates to a higher upside, but a bigger downside as well. So ask yourself if you have a stomach of steel. But regardless, I still believe it's meaningful to have some exposure to gold 
because the world is getting increasingly chaotic. We have no idea how much the next QE could amount to, how much money could the Federal Reserve really print. Plus, if a new economic or hot war breaks out in the Indo-Pacific, all these are black swan events that we can't calculate, but they will benefit gold. And remember to do your own research, but personally, I'll be buying more gold as the price continues to crash. Gold is not the end-all be-all, but I am very glad I have some with me. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this the time to buy gold now? And are you buying more after this price drop? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.